This is Duke University. Hello, I'm Omid Safi. I'm the director of the Duke Islamic Studies Center. And we're very fortunate today to have Mustafa Aykul, one of the leading Turkish intellectuals and journalists, joining us for a conversation about the important Turkish elections that just took place. Thank you very much, Mustafa, for being with us today here at Duke. Thank you, Omid, for having me at Duke in, in this conversation. It's a pleasure. It's our pleasure. So uh, we just had this historic election, um, somewhat of an unexpected turn, where we saw the leading Turkish party, the AKP, mm -hmm. Um, lose some support. I was wondering if you can help put this in a little bit of context for mm -hmm. us. Can you help get us started by thinking about what happened, what was expected, and what was mm -hmm. surprising mm -hmm. in terms of what we saw? Mm -hmm. It was a surprising election. It was a positively surprising <laughs> election for many people who want a more liberal Turkey, if you will. First, a little b background. The AKP, or the Justice and Development Party with Turkish initials, uh, came to power in 2002. Uh, the founders were reformed Islamists, if you want to use the term. People who had an agenda that you would define as political Islam, and of course that's a vague term too, but they basically said, we are still conservative Muslims, but we believe in the European project. We want to be a member of the EU, and we want to incorporate these liberal democracy, democracy standards that are established in the EU. And they did a pretty good job for many years in the beginning of uh, moving towards EU and uh, realizing reforms uh, and a booming economy. Uh, but gradually, the more they dominated the system, the, lo the more they lost interest in reform. The party was a pluralist party, but it growingly became uh, structured around the cult of personality of President, uh, recently President, but then Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, and uh, some of the more liberal names in the party were sidelined. Uh, I think the most important person was there, Abdullah Gül, the two found one of the two founders of the party. Gül is now retired, and uh, I th according to a recent book by uh, one of his advisors, he feels very sad and disillusioned about what the party has become in the past couple of years, losing all that liberal narrative and becoming defensive, aggressive, and, and angry, and you know, very uh, authoritarian in many ways. So, uh, but the AKP has been winning elections. Uh, and it was winning elections partly thanks to this aggressive mode, which was thought to be appreciated by at least a half of society, that polarization in society between the supporters and the opponents of the AKP was helping them to win the elections. That was the consensus. However, in this election, in June 7, the party had an unexpected drop in its votes. Uh, it had won 51% in 2011. It came down to 41%, which is still a huge majority. I mean, it's still Turkey's biggest party by uh, a great difference. But uh, the next party is 25% with secular CHP. But by dropping there, they lost the parliament majority. And of course, when they were dropping, Another party, the fourth political force in Turkey in terms of its size, the Kurdish political movement, and the party that it has founded, the HDP, People's Democracy Party, it had a surprising increase, and that disrupted the balance, and now the AKP cannot establish a government of its own. It needs a coalition with another party, and that's something new for Turkey. The coalition party means that AKP will not be able to pass everything that it wants, every law it wants. In the, in the parliament, it doesn't have the majority. This has very important implications. Turkey has a board for everything. Mm -hmm. There's a board for TVs and uh, radios which monitors every uh, broadcast and uh, punishes them according to the content of their, uh, if it is unlawful, but you know, it's very subjective. So they won't have the majority there, so it will mean something for the media. They won't be able to pass every law they wanted, which they did in five minutes, you know, since if you don't have the government, parliament majority. And if, you're in, and if the government is made of a coalition, the coalition party, the partner, will not be as powerful as the AKP because it's a smaller uh, segment there, but it will still have some demands and it will lead the AKP to some consensus. But that consensus with whom? Mm. So that's now the important thing. Uh, there are two main options here. One is the uh, second party, the main opposition party, which is the more secular leaning uh, CHP, which traditionally has uh, follow the footsteps of Ataturk, Turkey's secular founder, 
and criticize AKP on the secularism grounds. But if they can build a government together, it can be a, uh, something very un-Turkish, <laughs> which is consensus, mm -hmm. a grand national reconciliation like Tunisians have been able to do uh, lately. Uh, that's one option, and I have some sympathy for that option if that happens. The other option is that AKP may, can make a coalition with the third party in the parliament uh, in, in terms of its size, which is the Nationalist Action Party, which is by European definitions the kind of far-rightish nationalist party, which is uh, very much against the peace process with the Kurds, one of the actually successes of the AKP. So some people are worried that if AKP makes a coalition with MHP, this third party nationalist party, the peace process with the Kurds will be trashed out, AKP will become strident against the Kurdish political movement in Turkey, in Syria, in Iraq, like that whole new Kurdish reality coming up and AKP will have a bigger tension with that. Uh, or if these options fail, we will have early elections again, because if no government takes place in 45 days after the parliament opens, uh, you try again and hope that something new will come out. Word has it that President Erdogan has some sympathy for that option because he thinks that if there are renewed elections, some people can say, oh, enough with this instability. We want stability back, which means the AKP. The elections really gave a breath of fresh air in the sense mm -hmm. that a, a Turkey dominated by one political camp, whatever that camp, <laughs> camp is, is bad. And the AKP was going there, and now at least it has to think twice before going there. And, and in that sense, it's not a savior, but it gave a breath of fresh air.